operator at the Jerry O'Connor Water Treatment Plant. I'll take you through the process of water treatment at each stage of our process. So we have two intakes out into the bay. Uh, one is 750 millimeters and the other is 900 millimeters in diameter. And they're running about 550 meters from the bay into our screen room. And we have potassium and manganate as a zebra uh, control and for taste and odor as well in the summer months when the bay's not frozen over. So this is our screen room. Both of those intakes come into this room, one valve for each of the intakes, and they come into this raw well. We have a traveling screen that catches any dirt, I shouldn't say dirt, but any fish, sticks, bags, anything that comes into the plant, this will stop it. We don't want any of those debris to harm our pumps, so it's better to get it out down than have it come into the plant. So this prohibits it. In here, because it's the traveling screen, anything that gets caught in the screen, such as fish or seaweed, will get push a water nozzle into this trough. So any kind of fish or seaweed will get caught in the trough. After that, the water passes through the screen and continues on into our pump room. These are our low lift pumps. We have four of them. And normally only one or two run at a time. Each one is rated for 23 million liters per day. We also monitor for the water quality coming in on the raw water. So we measure for turbidity, the level of the water level under the pumps, pH, turbidity, temperature as well. So the low lift pumps are called low lift, low lift because they're pushing the water into a low pressure area, which means all they're doing is that they're taking it from that low, low, low lift room up to this next level being the rapid mixers. Before the water gets to the rapid mixers, it actually goes outside where aluminum sulfate is added into the basement as our coagulant. So the water goes downstairs, the alum, what we call it, is added, goes outside and comes into this room at the west wall. These are our rapid mixers and all they are is just a great big blender mixing the alum or aluminum sulfate in with the water so it's just an even mixture. So this is our coagulation process. These are our flocculation cells, or tanks. So we've added a coagulant, so now we have to have time for the coagulant to work to create our flock, which is why it's called flocculation. And we have three cells, and there's three sets for redundancy. Each of the cells here in this series is slower and turning a different direction. And the reason for that is a coagulant is like a stick, sticky glue. It captures all the dirt, particles, organics, anything that's in the water that's not supposed to be there into, creates a flock, or like a sheet in a flock. So it's all puffy cloud. So that when it gets to the last cell, it's big enough and heavy enough that it will come out of solution when we need it to, instead of just sitting in the water, just like a particle in your glass. This is our plate settler stage, another form of cementation, but the opposite, working the opposite of the DAF. In this case, a flock that's formed from our previous tank will land on the plates. Once you get enough flock formed and get heavy enough, it'll fall off the plates and onto the bottom of the tank. On the bottom of the tank is a track vac, so essentially a huge vacuum that goes along the bottom and picks up any of the sludge that's fallen off the plates. The water on the top of the plates will end up going to our filters. So these are our filters. We have 12 of them. They are granulated activated carbon filters. So they have a GAC top and then sand at the bottom and then you have your under drainage. So every 48 hours, these are being cleaned. So for us, that means every six, every four hours, one of these are being washed. We have 12 of them. So six being washed one day and the other six being washed the next day. So after 48 hours, these filters have to be washed. In washing it, what we do is we filter it down to a certain level, and then inside we have agitators that shake up any of the dirt that's on the surface of the filters to help make it easier to get the dirt out of it when we do backwash. Afterwards, this filter is put back in service and it continues on with the rest of, the, the rest of its filtering. And it kind of 
works like a, the filtering process like a huge Brita filter. Brita filter that you have in your fridge. It's got a filter the water going down through it. It helps take out any of the dirt or flock that's left in the water. So we've just left the filters. Once the water comes out of the filters, it needs to be chlorinated. We need to kill any bugs that are in the water. So after the water's come out of it, we put it through a chlorination. So chlorine's being added, and it also needs time for the chlorine to work on the bugs. So underneath those filters are contact tanks. And it just allows the contact to work on any of the bugs, make sure they're all killed off before it goes out to your house. Once that's done, it comes through, goes over our waterfall, and before it goes pumped out to the city, we add fluoride to it for dental purposes. So in our high lift room, we're pumping out water that's already been chlorinated, fluoridated, and it's going out to your taps. So we have five pumps that run, but right now we're only running one. It's a variable frequency drive pump, also called VFD. And we have two pumps in there that are constant speeds that will only do one speed and one speed only. We also have two small pumps that are transfer pumps that pump over to our on-site reservoir, also known as our million gallon reservoir. It allows water to be pumped over and to be pumped or flowed back through a return valve for us to be used in the plant in our clear well when level in the clear well drops, it's usually during a backwash. And we measure the water quality as well in that room. We measure for pH, free and total chlorine, turbidity, pressure out to the city, flow rate to the city, and a flow rate to our million gallon reservoir and our fluoride residual as well.